Will the uh, Tuesday, July 24th meeting of the Wilma Public Library District Board of Trustees please come to order. Uh, Madam Secretary, will you call the roll? I certainly will. Trustee Rogers? Here. Trustee McDonald? Here. Trustee Laughlin? Here. Mm, Trustee Barshas? Yes. Trustee Wolf? Happy to be here. <laughs> All right, the first item of business is to approve the June board uh, minutes uh, located so behind attachment one. To approve those minutes. Uh, it's been moved. I second it. And Lisa seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes have been approved. Um, there are no members of the public wish, no presentation. Uh, no members of the public wishing to make a comment. We'll move on then to item five, which is the treasurer's report. Ron. We got $46,000 from Tenilworth Library District and smaller amounts in donations, general fund interest in miscellaneous income, and $2,600 in fines. Uh, tax bills are out, so after they are due August 1st, we will see the rest of what we're likely to see in the next 60 days uh, from uh, tax receipts. Uh, there's nothing else particularly uh, exciting in the um, you know, in the financial report. Um, we are under budget as we typically are at this point, which means that we'll do some follow-up um, in the next 60 days with respect to the uh, uh, any balance transfers. Um, the other item that we need to address is to approve bills and salaries for June. I assume we'll second. Uh, there's been a motion to approve. And second. Stuart, has there been a second? No, uh, Ron opened. He, he, he moved you second. I second Got yes. it. Yes. Okay. Um, so it's been moved and second to approve the bills and salaries. Jan, could you call the roll on that? Trustee Rogers. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee O'Loughlin. Yes. Trustee Barshas. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Yes. Okay. Moving then on to our first action, first and only action I have is the approval of the of ordinance number 2017-18-189, which is the combined annual budget and appropriation ordinance for library purposes and the certificate of estimate of revenue. The ordinance would we pass this ordinance in tentative form in the June meeting. Um, remember? This is not the levy. We still need to discuss the levy. Uh, this is the budget. This is what we anticipate spending, how we anticipate spending funny money next year. Uh, and we've appropriated funds in order to, you know, pay for those expenses. So um, could I get a motion to, uh, if we have any discussion, we'll discuss it in a minute. But do we? Uh, can I get a motion? Approval of the budget and appropriation ordinance. Could I get a second? I second. second. Okay, it's been a <laughs> moved and seconded. Um, <laughs> is there any further discussion on this? I don't think so. no discussion. Um, I would like to uh, call the roll on I the motion. I do want to make one comment. Okay. Um, in the um, report on our last meeting, um, there was some confusion. Um, the um, budget and appropriation ordinance includes some funds that we need to appropriate, but that we do not expect to need to spend. Um, that is because under Illinois law, if we had a catastrophe, a fire, a flood, a tornado, or anything else that caused severe damage, we have to have appropriated the authority to address that, to spend the money to uh, re do repairs. But that's not something that actually occurs very often. In fact, the last tornado in Wilmette was in 1928. Um, and so these are not uh, funds that we are likely to spend, but they do go into the appropriation ordinance. Uh, 
And so um, I think that distinction is important. Um, the budgeted amount of expenses is substantially less than what we are required to appropriate to give us the authority to be able to cover such emergencies. So we are responsible for planning to be able to handle those emergencies, but we don't need to spend those monies unless something occurs that requires it. Right. And also, this is not to be confused with the levy. The levy is another item, um, and it's obviously related to and tees off these numbers, but nonetheless is not the same as. So it's been moved and seconded. We had a comment from Ron. Any further discussion? Uh, Jan, can you call the roll on mm -hmm. that? Trustee Rogers? Yes. Trustee McDonald? Yes. Trustee Olaf? Aye. Trustee Barshes? Yes. Trustee Wolf? Aye. Thank you. Um, okay. Moving on to discussion items. Several things to discuss. Number one on the agenda is the landscaping project update. Um, Hi, Betty. Okay, so the um, the company IFS and the library did not reach an agreement on the writer that our attorney recommended for the proposal. So we are now looking at probably going out for request for qualifications to seek another company that would provide that service. I don't know if you, Stephen. <coughs> Well, right. had a chance to talk to the attorney, but that I was did. the recommendation from the I attorney. I did talk to him today, and he clarified that process a bit, and I sort of, uh, we had sort of a general discussion about the whole construction manager versus general contractor uh, versus approach to dealing with a project at the library and the what we have done for the last several is a construction manager and the architect develops all the bids we go out to bid and we enter into the contracts with the individual trades and the construction manager charges a fee and basically coordinates and manages the project. And that's what we're familiar with, and that's what we initially proposed doing it uh, with um, as of the last meeting. But this meeting, and the mo most recent meeting, once the con proposed construction manager basically dropped out of the process that, um, that we then, Betty and I, had a follow-up meeting with somebody who would be a owner's rep, but working with a general contractor. And we're going, oh, that's different. We haven't done that in a while. So I talked with Roger about that, and he, that is our attorney, Roger Ritzman, and he basically said, yes, the construction manager approach is becoming more and more popular. It's not as frequent that people use a general contractor, uh, but possibly, and this is, this is me speaking, he didn't say this, in the case of where we have the landscaping where we don't really have five jillion contractors, like when we did with the HVAC, yeah, right. where we opened up every single room in the building with trades right. and, and stuff, that, that he could see why this might work, or at least I could see how this might work, and that there aren't as many individual trades. So a general contractor might, you know, yes, he said that's, a, that's an approach that we could take, but if they would have to do this request for qualification, and it's a requirement of Illinois law for certain categories, and this is one of the ones categories, because I was thinking, oh, it's a, like hiring an attorney, we don't need to do that, but apparently the law, Illinois law is to the contrary. We do have to have this request for qualification project process if the bid 
his bid for services comes in at over 25000 I said, well, who figures out what's supposed to be in the general? How do we go get this general contractor who's going to do everything for us? And he said, that's basically the architect's job, is to draft the bid and help us go get the general contractor. Now, um, that's where we are in this process. Betty, wouldn't you say, like, we don't have a general? No one's. No, we don't. And we haven't had, since this is a different process, I mean, in every, in both instances, somebody would have had, i.e. the architect, get down there and figure out what exactly it needs to be done and draft that. And whether it's individual trades or one overall, the general contractor, still, it's, he said it's incumbent upon the architect to sit down and provide that information to us. So when we have a chance to talk to our architect, who I believe is not available this week, is that? Right, she's in right. vacation um, That <clears throat> we need to have a further conversation with them and sort of say, okay, this is where it is. And it's our understanding, the ball is in your court to sort of move it along with next week. We can't draft the bids for that. And, you know, the library. Yeah, Tesco. Was there provision? I thought there was already provision for them to prepare the bid documents for a project manager. Yes, for the project manager where we hold all the individuals, but we, we did not the, we did not have it set up with, this is a different, I think probably similar, because it's the same work that needs to be done, but a different bid package would be for general contract. We get, you know, bids for maybe three different companies rather than. So. I, so well, is there a likely addendum to the current agreement with Tesca that is like that in order to achieve this, or is this is fall under the work that's already in their contract? I can't answer that question. I mean, we sort of have to have. Then we are definitely in a standstill. Um, without, a, I mean, we, we know what we want to do, but we haven't quite figured out the parties who are going to do it. We're okay. definitely in a standstill. If you're putting the project on hold, mm -hmm. then time doesn't matter in this case. It absolutely does. If you're helping to do any part of the work oh. before the end of this calendar year, then timing is very important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, we're, I think everybody is very, very aware of the fact that the, the summer is mm -hmm. is slipping away from us, as we mm -hmm. discussed in another context. The days are getting shorter. It may well be, and I think a big part of the conversation would be with Tesco. Okay, can we, for example, peel off completely as a separate item the concrete snow melt process and do that, but even say that, it's not exactly as easy as that because it's not the same footprint as the existing contract. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not at all obvious to me whether we're going to be able to move this forward this year or not. You can't redo the hardscape and leave the rest undone. And there would have to be some provision somehow, and, and that's why we have to sit down with Tesco, who, as I said, is not available this week. It's already mm -hmm. Tuesday. And so, all right, guys, where do we stand on this? Is, are we better, you know, what, what do we do? I mean, we, we don't have us any strong, any clarity as to where we are because of the fact that one of the parties that we thought was going to be basically handling this has dropped out of the process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, my, my, my thought is, I mean, I, and Jan and I were just talking about this, but you know, we, one of the things we were excited about was the idea of making it easier for patrons come wintertime with the kind of heavy snows we've had to kind of have that heated you know, sidewalk. I don't know how critical that is, but is it possible at least to explore without too much time consumption? trying to get someone else in place and then see once we know how long it would take us to get that person in place, how that changes the you know, the timetable going forward to have stuff happening. Well, the timetable is also dependent on what the Illinois and laws and regulations are in regards to... We still to have 30 days for a bid. Right. Yeah, right. so I don't, you know, I think 
the work could be done in the fall, particularly the concrete work. Yeah. If we can as come long if, as yeah. it's done with the ambient temperatures above 50 degrees, you're fine with the concrete. The principal issue is that if it's a total redesign of the outside region, you can't leave half of it undone. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I so agree. that's the dilemma, is that if you're going right. to change the footprint mm -hmm. of the concrete, you really have to finish the landscape portion uh, at about the same time, or you're going to create sloppy conditions for the winter, which you don't want. Right. So the the uh, the issue really is that the project probably needs to be done as, as a, a whole. whole, and that might not be feasible until spring, if the bids and the timing don't work. But you 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 still have time to have bids in hand in September, if the architect has the specs pretty much ready. The question is, 